soldier who wields the saw or hammer, whether at the front lines or behind them, can be just as important to the success of an operation as the soldier manning a machine gun or mortar. There's plenty of complicated building and engineering to be done in this war, but regardless of how complicated it may be, there are certain basic tools in all construction. Basic? Sure. But don't get the idea that just because a tool is simple, you know all about it. There's a wrong way and a right way to use any tool. Of course, there's always the wise guy who once hammered a tack in the wall and thinks he's a master carpenter. Nothing to measuring a piece of timber is there, pal. Simple, huh? Now, a quick mark with the old pencil. Yes, sir. And a couple of jabs with a trusty saw, and there you are. Nothing like a man who knows what he's doing. Hmm, seems to be a little trouble here. You couldn't have made a mistake with a simple zigzag rule, or could you? Funny, it looks all right. But this piece of lumber isn't funny. It took as much manpower to prepare as it does to manufacture a shell. And now that lumber's wasted. Think about that. Let's learn the right way to do it. Take the zigzag ruler. It's 72 inches long when opened, but he's unfolding just enough to measure the length he wants. Putting the zero end of the ruler at the exact edge of the board, he measures off the desired length. In this case, 13 and 9 16 inches. Each inch is divided up into sixteenths, so he picks the ninth, and that's all there is to it. However, check your work accurately to be certain you measure in a straight line. Otherwise, you'll get a wrong reading. When measuring width, make sure the ruler is as square as possible to the edge of the timber. And when you're finished, Fold the rule, and if necessary, add a drop of thin lubricating oil to loosen up a stiff joint. When the distance you want to measure is longer than the full length of the zigzag ruler, use a metallic tape. The tape is 50 feet long when extended and is wound into the leather case. The tape itself, marked in both feet and inches, is a strip of cloth reinforced with fine copper wire to prevent it from stretching. With one man holding the spool, the other takes the zero end to the starting point. Notice the metal ring is the zero point on this tape. Uh-oh, a kink. That tape must be held taut, or the measurement would be worthless. Remember, no kink. So hold it to the line, and there it is, the correct measurement. When you're through using it, don't forget to wind the tape back into the spool. If wound while wet, the numbers will fade and the cloth decay. So wipe it or let it dry before winding it. It may take a little longer, but in the end, it saves time. Now here's a problem where a little knowledge helps a lot. For a clean job, this plank has to be cut off at a true 90 degree angle. Now, don't let the grease throw you. They're just another measurement like inches or feet. So, to square the board, we use another basic tool, the framing square. It's made of two steel sections. The short, narrow section is the tongue, and the other section is the blade joined at the heel at a right angle or 90 degrees. So when you want to square off a piece of timber, drop the blade slightly and anchor it firmly against the edge of the timber. Make sure the surface of the timber is clear of dirt or shaving. Use a carpenter's pencil to mark the plank. Pencil against the outside of the tongue, flat side against the steel. If you want to extend the line, merely repeat the process from the other edge. Now, these pieces were cut to a different angle, one of 45 degrees. You can get that angle with the framing square, too.
Place the framing square so that the 12-inch mark on the outside edge of the blade and the 12-inch mark on the outside edge of the tongue are over the edge of the timber. Or use other equal measurements. Make your mark along the tongue, and there you are. A perfect 45-degree angle. If you have several pieces of lumber to measure at the same angle, use the T-bevel square. The T-bevel is a steel blade joined to a wooden bar with a thumb screw that enables you to set it at any desired angle. For a 45-degree angle, simply loosen the thumb screw. Place the wood bar against the side of the timber and move the loose blade until it's in line with the marked angle. Now tighten the screw and the T-bevel is set. The other pieces of lumber can now be easily and accurately marked. Continue the line to the other edge with the framing square. Then you're ready to get busy with your saw. So put together two timbers, each at a 45 degree angle, and you have a square corner or 90 degree angle. Nothing to it when you know how. They're good tools, these squares. Don't use them for a pry. Don't leave them around to be stepped on. They're easily bent. Before putting them away, be sure to clean them and spread a little oil in the metal part. Rust is an enemy, and oil kills it. You'll find it pays off to take proper care of your tools. trades, and here's one of the carpenter's best. Marking long strips of timber with a chalk line. You hold the chalk in your left hand, like this, and then as the line is pulled over the chalk, you roll it back and forth. In this way, you're sure of an even distribution of chalk, and the line won't cut into it. Of course, unless one end of the line is fastened, it takes two men to make a chalk line mark. You place the line and tighten it without smudging the mark. Then lift the line, not too high, and snap it. And there's your mark, quick and neat. No, this is not a fish's eye. What you're looking at is the bubble of a level. When that bubble swings between those two hairlines, you know whatever you're testing for level is level. The bubble is your guide. There it is directly in the center, showing the step stringer is absolutely level. The soldier, after making sure the surface of the timber is clean, turns the level around to take another reading. Not a bad idea, for the level is a delicate instrument and another check isn't a waste of time. That stringer's okay. How about the next one? There's your answer. The timber's lined up and ready to be nailed. Remember, the bubble must be in the center of the two hairlines to prove the level. 
By turning the level up and down this way, you can check whether the construction is plumb. Plumb being just a quicker way of saying straight up and down. The soldier wants to plumb this post. Notice, by the way, he's mighty careful the level isn't unnecessarily jarred or given rough treatment. The post is adjusted until the bubble holds at center. There it is. A second check, and you're all set. Measuring, marking, leveling, elementary carpentry, sure, but the backbone of the biggest construction job. <laughs>